wore his special shirt to come and eat my pasta. I did. It looks like I'm just touching your nipple. It does. It feels like it as well. <laughs> Welcome back to When in Rome, the series where I show you how to make the four classic Roman pastas. On this tray, I've got all of the ingredients to make all four of the pastas in this series. Tomatoes, guanciale, pecorino cheese, some eggs, and obviously pasta. And we're gonna make amatriciana. The first thing I'm gonna do is get some pasta water into boil. I've already done that because I'm a professional. The next thing I'm gonna do is take my guanciale. Now, guanciale is the cured pork jowl, so like the cheek of the pig which is why it's super fatty. So I've cut off my chunk here already. This is enough for four people. It's about 120, between 120 and 150 grams. And you can see if you have a look in here, it's super, super fatty. So really this cut isn't about the meat, it's about the fat. And really for me, this is what gives this dish its really kind of distinctive flavor. First thing I'm gonna do is just take off the rind from the outside. The skin's quite tough and I don't really want to be eating that. So I've cut it into three nice thick strips here, you see that? And then I'm gonna cut these into, what do you call them, lardons? Don't push down, let the knife do the work like that. And slice through. I'm gonna put it on over like a medium low heat. And the reason for that is that I wanna bring the guanciale up in the heat of the pan. And that's gonna to help to render out some of that fat. If you put it straight into a really hot pan, it will sizzle and it will color, but it can kind of color too quickly before that fat's had a chance to melt. Yeah. I've got these here. These are nice plum tomatoes. These are San Marzano tomatoes. I just got those because they're a nice, a nice good quality variety of tomato that I think is really particularly good in tomato sauces. So I'm gonna crush them up with my hands like this. So you have a nice, kind of pulp, spray it everywhere, maybe get a bit on your white t-shirt. And then I can break them down a bit more when they're in the pan with the spoon. So have a look at this. See that guanciale rendering out? And you see here where it's kind of going a little bit translucent. That's the fat rendering. That's really important, that's what we want. So let's just kind of let this cook down. You're also gonna see them like shrink down in size, which is another reason that I don't like to cut them too small in, in the beginning. You can see this is starting to get nice and crispy. You can see that they've shrunk down in size a lot. And you can also see a lot of fat in the bottom of the pan. Don't be scared of the fat. And now I'm gonna put the tomato straight into the pan. And this is the moment, right? When that tomato hits the hot pork fat. So I'm just gonna let it kind of simmer away at quite a lively pace for eight, 10 minutes, something like that. Just until it thickened a little bit. Now is a good time to put the pasta in because then they'll finish cooking at about the same time. Just gonna season the pasta water nicely. So little twist in the middle and let go. And it's all gonna sink into the water nicely. So while this is simmering away, it's probably a good time to kind of talk a little bit about this dish and where it comes from. It's another pasta called Grisha, which we're gonna come to, which is cacio e pepe plus the meat that you saw me cooking here, the guanciale with the addition of tomatoes. This isn't actually really strictly a Roman pasta. It's a pasta from Amatrice, which is why it's called Amatriciana. Rome and Amatrice are both in Lazio and they both have kind of a strong link between the two places. I'm using spaghetti, which is what you normally find still today in Amatrice, but often in Rome, you'll find this pasta served with bucatini, which is kind of like thick pasta, a thick, round, long spaghetti with a hole all the way through the middle. So I'm just gonna give this a quick taste, see where we're at. Looks good, see how it's thickened up a little bit. It's so good. It's like a pig and a tomato had a baby. And you're a freak, so you wanna eat the baby. <laughs> right, let's check on the spaghetti. <laughs> Nice, okay. This is al dente. A little bit of bite in the middle. And this is just gonna go straight into the pan. So straight out of here, straight into the pan like that. And it's okay to carry over some of this water like that. You see it all draining in. That's just gonna help us build our sauce. So I'm gonna leave this on like a low heat. And then with my pasta in the pan like this, start to kind of bring the two together. 
mixing, mixing, mixing like this, get it all kind of nice and emulsified and delicious. The reason that you want to kind of keep your pasta water here is that you can grab a little ladle and add a splash just to kind of loosen it up, just to make, make this all kind of come together. You don't want it to be like thick and claggy, you know, you want it to be smooth and kind of smooth and sexy. Give it a few nice little flicks. Silky, glossy. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That's so hot. <laughs> a little bit of salt. Not too much, because I'm going to put some salty cheese on. I've got my favourite bowl. I'm going to put a little bit of my water in there like that, just to warm it up. There you go. Easy way to warm up your pasta bowls. Oh, look at that. Stop it. There's the whole thing that you can do with the ladle and the tongs and da 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 da. But an easy way to do it is just to grab it like this. Put the long end, oh, don't drop it. Put the long end into the bowl and then just turn the bowl as you put the spaghetti down. And without too much effort, it's gonna just kind of keep it in a nice little nest like that. And I'm gonna grab a couple of these nice little pieces of the guanciale and just dot them around. This is Pecorino Romano. So it's a sheep's milk cheese, Pecorino is a sheep's milk cheese and Romano, so the type of sheep's milk cheese from Rome, right? I'm gonna add a little bit of this on just to the end because it's gonna give it that kind of salty kick. A bit like if you put Parmesan on a dish. Bit of black pepper for some heat. Et voila, done. That is spaghetti alla matriciana, alla matriciana. I love it. I'm gonna go and get a couple of guys to try it. Actually, I'm gonna try it first. And then I'm gonna go and get a couple of big, or should I leave it all nice for them? What do you think? It's up to you. No. <laughs> I'm gonna have the first taste. Mm. Delicious. Right. I'm gonna go and get them to try it. Pork and tomato. Yeah. Hello, you two lovely pair. Hello. How are we? Mm. Go for another fork. I haven't even eaten any pasta yet. Mm. <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. Delicious. Mm. Find out. Delicious. All right, there you go. Amat Spichana. Like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. Come back next week when we're going to do Gricha. Maybe. Sounds good to me. <laughs> so don't push down and sorry, go with a go with an incredibly massive penis driving past on his bike. Whose idea was it to put the cutlery drawer there? <laughs>